one specific star of all the myriad stars you see twinkling in your night sky sends its spirit to earth to incarnate in your individual human form. Your ego is designed to help that spirit, who lacks your familiarity with the cooler realms, to remain creatively incarnate here. Until you have bonded with the star consciousness, you remain unfinished. You do not yet know your own material or spiritual nature. You will in time. But if we are to assist you now in peacefully experiencing this coming age while your species multiplies and fills the earth, you must remember to honor the values of our spirits, just as we honor you and your own material values. In time these distinctions will dissolve and we will know ourselves as one, but for now we must tread lightly, extending to one another patience and respect. The egos of the first incarnate ones welcomed this message. For a time, they were filled with enthusiasm. They genuinely loved us and shared our wish to see the Great Spirit's plan succeed. However, as the moons of these first seasons passed, willingness to play their parts creatively did not last among all the incarnate ones. What happens when an actor who was asked to play a supporting role rebels and tries to play the lead role instead, with no knowledge of the part? You were there in the beginning. You might remember. Certain tribes among the first humans found the input of their five physical channels of perception so sensationally rich and awesome that as their early centuries on earth passed, they forgot that perception was also available to them on intuitive and imaginative frequencies. Such oversight was significant, for the imagination and the intuition were the inner communication devices designed to keep each angelic spirit in close and frequent communication with its human projection during the early stages of bonding as these first human tribes placed increasing emphasis on the physical, their behavior came to orient more and more around sensual priorities. As time passed, certain egos began to assume decision-making authority in realms of spirit where they as yet had no experience. They began to place such a high value on caring for their bodies, they lost sight of the reason for having bodies at all. A visible yet disproportionately influential minority of your early ancestors became infatuated with sensual input. They behaved with less and less awareness of our consciousness or the informing designs that we brought from the Great Spirit. The bonding that was to occur between spirit and ego could not happen in such a state. These egos came to see our spirits as foreign elements. They forgot that spirit and ego are two manifestations of the same presence, that each human body is created by the presence of a spirit being on the material plane. They forgot that they were reflections in matter of our spirit presence. In time, the body and its physical priorities became their sole reality. When a certain tribe began to think of cooperation with us as working with the invisible spirits of non-physical beings, that they could not see with their eyes, but whom they felt landing like huge birds in the branches of their central nervous systems, they reacted in fear. Instead of seeing our lighthearted spirit values as a profound basis for co-creation co with their own durable physical values, the egos of this tribe began to fear this healthy and quite compatible difference in value systems. They gave exaggerated emphasis to their legitimate function of caring for the physical body and began to see our spirits as lacking in sufficient respect for the physical plane. They rejected our spiritual values, seeing them as frivolous and irresponsible. They identified with a piece of the puzzle with an aspect of their own wholeness. They did not realize that by doing this, they were in fact rejecting their true selves and choosing instead fictitious mortal identities. They were focusing on the shadows 
and not upon the beginnings of light who cast them. See and spirit as separate from themselves, the egos cut themselves off from the inner direction designed to guide the multiplication and flourishment of their species on earth. In these tribes, the incarnation of our angelic spirits were interrupted, the human creation unfinished. Without the ego's cooperation, the required spirit-ego bonding could not take place. Human creation was still in process when the ego rule humans ran off into the jungle. We called after them. Whatever you do, do not cut off communication with us. Without the perceptual input of your invisible spirit, you will never survive as conscious beings in the jungle of subconscious matter. You do not have a view of the larger picture. You won't see the forests for the trees. Come back. You cannot remain conscious, motivated by fear. You will experience sorrow, suffering, and death. But the ego humans ignored our warning and departed into worlds of illusion. Their fear stirred up emotional turbulence, which crackled like constant static across the frequencies that were intended to connect us. Further communication with them was impossible. We had to let them go. Their free will was an essential ingredient in the larger terrestrial gestation that was taking place. As millennia passed, fear-centered egos came to dominate other tribes of early humans. Warfare was initiated. Love-centered egos declined in number. Eventually, fear motivation supplanted love motivation as the dominant human deity, and it would tolerate no other god. So it was that the egos took the center stage of human identity. The implications proved greater than anyone had dreamed. Human societies initially woven together by the gentle currents of tribal affection began to break up and decline. Like a beast issuing ignorance, the savagery of the caveman era was released upon the earth. The spirit world blueprints, the great spirit's operating instructions for the human body's proper use were ignored. The earth's guidance system short-circuited. Our communication system designed to connect us with our creation were now inoperative. We were left with no choice but to guide the rebellious tribes externally and trust that eventually they would learn. We longed to see our people running lightly through the forest and meadows again, creating songs that would bring joy to the earth and her creatures, not struggling in pain, building their huts and hovels along crowded riverbanks. We longed to see the warrior societies stop hurting one another and crying out desperately to images of a god now carved in stone. We longed for them to start seeing once again with their own eyes the spirit of the living God that is both the mother, the creator mother earth and the eternal spirit fire of the sun. We longed to see them welcome, uh, welcome us back to complete the design for the optimal development of our sacred world. But your ancestors were difficult, oh, so difficult back then, to reach. For when human beings cut off their conscious connection with the Great Spirit, they entered the twilight realms of the subconscious where evolution, education, and precise justice prevail. The lords of karma meticula meticulously rule these twilight worlds like well-trained umpires policing every right and wrong seeing that the books are balanced at the end of every age. For the sake of saving as many of you as possible, closed systems, tribes, nations, even whole continents were isolated to preserve the rights of the inhabitants to choose their own forms of education. Tens of thousands of years pass, containing many epics, histories, and adventures. We of the angelic realms preserved the harmony in as many lands as we could. For thousands of years, we exercised a benevolent stewardship over the